we just heard this story, you're right. We did hear parts of the same passage during Advent, but in the message version of the Bible, and without Jesus' baptism included. We have used the same artwork because it is a representation of Jesus' baptism and because it's just really lovely. John said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with holy fire, holy spirit and fire. John's baptism, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're both with water. They're both about repentance, so what's the difference? And what's the big deal about baptism anyway? John's baptism was simply about repentance. It's acknowledgement of an atonement for sins committed. The baptism of the Holy Spirit kills sin, washes you clean like a newborn. In the baptism of the Holy Spirit, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. All that is good in every person he embraces and keeps to himself, while all that is evil is discarded, burned, gone. Martin Luther, you may have heard of Martin Luther, started the Reformation. He suffered bouts of anxiety throughout his lifetime, and when it was at its very worst, he would center himself and reassure himself by saying, I am baptized. In a writing first published in the year 1519, Luther said, we must hold boldly and fearlessly to our baptism and hold it up against all sins and terrors of conscience and humbly say, I know full well that I have not a single work which is pure, but I am baptized. And through my baptism, God, who cannot lie, has bound himself in a covenant with me not to count my sin against me, but to slay it and blot it out. I do need to point out here that Martin Luther was baptized as an infant, and indeed Lutherans and many other Christian traditions do practice infant baptism today. What Martin, Martin Luther was saying about baptism is this, that in our baptism, whenever it happened, we have our sins removed. And when we sin after we have been baptized, as we will, because human, we must return to our baptism, return to the faith of a child, reaffirming our desire to belong to God. Sin is not drowned at once, or its consequences escaped in a moment. For baptism but begins the constant struggle against sin that doesn't end until the close of life. Unless baptism is the beginning of a new life, it is without meaning. That's from a book called Works of Martin Luther, Holy Sacrament of Baptism. Baptism is what allows us to call ourselves Christian. And baptism has divided Christians more than perhaps any other issue. In 1525, a movement called Anabaptist began. These were people who believed that infant baptism was not biblical and therefore not valid. They believed that only believers' baptism was valid and ordained by Christ. And indeed, as far as we can tell from Scripture, only adults who proclaimed that they believed that Jesus is the Christ were baptized. Although, there are those who say that when a whole household was baptized, as with Cornelius, that included infants and slaves who might not believe but had to do what their master said. We don't know. It doesn't specify any of that. So be that as it may, Anabaptists were despised and hated by Catholics and Protestants alike. As early as 1527, just two years after the movement began, in some nations, it was a capital crime to participate in believers' baptism. Catholics burned Anabaptists at the stake. Lutherans and other Protestants usually just had them beheaded or drowned, which is kind of making the punishment fit the crime. I wasn't there. I didn't think these things up. <laughs> Even giving food or drink to an Anabaptist was a crime. The Anabaptist movement 
survived, and gave birth to Mennonites, Amish, Quakers, Baptists, and yes, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. The question of whether infant baptism or believer's baptism is the right way to do it can still divide us today. I was in a meeting of the New Church Start Committee in another region when a young minister who was starting a Disciples UCC combined church was asked how he baptized folks. When he said that in his church both infant and believer's baptism would be practiced, some of the older ministers would like to have a stroke. They informed him that in the Christian church, disciples of Christ, only the believers' baptism is acceptable, and his new church needed to fall in line with that. It was a disciples' UCC church, UCC Baptist. Yeah, it's just, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Um, and it's not entirely true. Because while disciples do only baptize persons who are old enough to understand the commitment they are making when they turn their lives over to Jesus, we do accept all other baptism as valid. So if you have come here, having been baptized as an infant in another Christian tradition, that's okay. You do not need to be baptized again. I was taught that we don't ever rebaptize people, but I've come to recognize that for some people, the reaffirmation that comes with being baptized again as adults is an important new beginning. But however and whenever and wherever you were baptized, whether you were an infant or 12 years old or 72 years old, you are Christian. Alexander Campbell, one of the founders of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, said, But who is a Christian? I answer, everyone that believes in his heart that Jesus of Nazareth is the Messiah, the Son of God, repents of his sins, and obeys him in all things according to his measure of knowledge of his will. Jesus was baptized by John. And because most of us have been taught that Jesus was without sin, we might wonder why he needed to be baptized in the first place. Nadia Boltz Weber says it's so that God could proclaim his identity. He says, you are my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. And from that place of affirmation and confirmation, Jesus could go forward with his ministry knowing he had God's approval. Because we cannot forget ever that Jesus was fully human. He was, at that time, just another guy standing in the crowd as far as the rest of the folks there were concerned. But once he was recognized, once that voice from heaven proclaimed his identity, everything would change in his life. People would begin to see him differently. He would go from that place that day out into the wilderness to pre prepare himself for his ministry, he would be tested by Satan, he would pass that test, and he would begin teaching, healing, performing wonders. And the result of all this, the job that Jesus was sent by God to do is the salvation of the world, the healing of the nations, the death of sin in the hearts of all humankind. His work continues in us, for we are also, through our baptism, the beloved children of God. And that's hard for us to remember. We're just not always really good at believing that. Rachel Held Evans wrote, The great struggle of Christian life is to take God's name for us and believe that we are beloved, and to believe that's enough. We're really not good, enough, good at that enough thing. We're always looking for ways to improve ourselves or to compare ourselves to somebody else and falling short. But God only compares us to ourselves and loves us as we are at any given moment on any given day. I am baptized, said Martin Luther. Whenever he felt he wasn't good enough or not deserving or not worthy, whenever he felt the full weight of his sinful human nature, he would remember his baptism and he would proclaim, I am baptized. He would proclaim his baptism to remind himself that he was a child of God, a beloved child of God, and that he could begin afresh right then 
knowing that the remission of sin and baptism is not a once and done thing, but a continual daily effort. For unless baptism is the beginning of a new life, it means nothing. Whenever I call on you to look back on your baptism, as I do on some Sundays, I am not saying remember that day and that event. Because if you're like Martin Luther, or me, you were baptized at about one month old. And you're not going to remember that day. Well, most people aren't. But I can remember that Jesus was baptized and was recognized by God as his son, the beloved, in whom God was well pleased. And I can remember that I am baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I can remember that this act made me one of God's beloved children. And even if I wander off, as I did for a number of years, God still loves me. I am baptized. And I can begin again. All of us can begin again and start a new life in Christ again. Every day, any time we find ourselves straying from what we believe God's will to be for us. Because the good news, my sisters and brothers, is that we are all God's beloved children. We are all given the mission and ministry that he gave to Christ to go out into the world making disciples, spreading the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I invite you to stand with me now and sing of that day when Jesus was baptized down by the Jordan.